So uh, we give God praise uh, to be able to continue the story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Shall we pray? O oh God, my strength, O oh God, my redeemer. Father, I come before your throne of grace as I submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit and to the authority of your word. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of our heart altogether be acceptable in your sight. Give me the grace to deliver your word this morning in Jesus' name. Let all of God's people say the amen. amen. From victory to victory. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, in John chapter 20, verse 19, the disciples were so afraid when Jesus died. They all ran away and they were hiding somewhere. Peter and the other disciples, we know the story how Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. Before a woman who questioned him and said, you look like one of the disciples, Peter said, woman, go and drink your coffee. I don't know what you're talking about. They were so afraid. You know how we live in our life with this constant fear of tomorrow. We are so afraid. Fear is part of our human experience. And human beings, we are known to be afraid of many things. And there are those this morning, you worried, you know. Fear has brought anxiety to your life. And uh, you are just afraid. The fear, constant fear of tomorrow. How do we live with the resurrection power? How do we apply the resurrection of Jesus Christ in our life and continue to live in the victory that God has given us? Because Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead according to scripture and he rose from the dead and here Jesus Christ is saying, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, they shall live. My brothers and my sisters, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a big deal. I know we live in a time of liberalism where there are people who don't believe in the resurrection. This is why I said to you there is no shame to believe in the resurrection. There are some preachers who don't believe in the resurrection anymore. I said to one of my friends, if you don't believe in the resurrection, then resign. There is no need for you to deny the resurrection and stand in the pulpit to preach to us. The day I come here, I don't believe in the resurrection. You kick me out of here. Don't keep me here. It's simple like that. Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ, my brother, my sisters from the dead, it is the cornerstone. It is the foundation of our Christian faith. If you cannot believe in the resurrection, then so what? Now there are those who will come with this theory that no, he did not die physically. He did not come back to life physically. What came back is his teaching. No, 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 no. We believe in the real deal. On Friday around 3 o'clock he died. His blood stopped flowing in his vein. He was real dead. Water and blood separated from his body. He died, not suffocate. He died real dead and on Sunday morning, he rose from the dead. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, no, not resuscitation, but resurrection. Resurrection, he rose from the dead. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Peter is writing and say, my brothers and my sisters, we are born again to a living hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, God has caused us to be born again to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, God has given us an opportunity to live, to be born again to a living hope. Living hope. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, my brothers and my sisters, is God's opportunity to tell us that we can rebound. We can start all over again. God is giving you an opportunity to start all over again. To have hope again. It does not matter where you are. God is giving us an opportunity to say, I'm giving you a second chance. We are the people of the second chance. Every day of our lives, 
When you wake up in the morning, you encourage yourself because God has given you a second chance. You can start all over again in all areas of your life. God is giving you, you have been born to a living hope. You have been born to a living hope. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead gives us living hope. In other words, it's telling us, don't be afraid. Living hope means the courage to become. The power of the mind. The strength to overcome fear. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, whenever you are paralyzed with fear, because of the resurrection, among the benefit of the resurrection, God has given you the opportunity to tune into courage. Tune into courage. Tune into courage. Oh, how we need strength to overcome fear. The world lives under fear. Fear leads to anger. Fear leads to hate. Fear kills our ability to see things clearly. You know, when you're afraid, your vision is obscure. You have no clarity. We are afraid of future events. We are afraid of the unknown. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, how many people's blood pressure shoot up. Their heart rate increase. Why? Because they live constantly under fear of what will happen. Fear of tomorrow. I'm here to encourage you that through the power of the resurrection, we have been given the living hope, the courage to overcome fear. Whatever it is, fear of the unknown. Our lives are in the hands of God. God owns tomorrow. If Jesus rose from the dead, that tells us God can handle all about our lives. All the details of your life, God can handle that. This is why I say there is no shame to believe in the resurrection. Yes, I believe that he rose from the dead. And because he rose from the dead, I can first tomorrow. I'm not afraid of the unknown. I'm not afraid of tomorrow. I don't live under fear no more because of the resurrection. The courage, the strength to overcome fears. You know our fears condition our mind. Sometimes because we are so afraid, it sets our limit. We live sometimes below our potential because we are afraid to try. Fear Kills more dreams than failure ever will. There are those who are afraid to fail, afraid to try, and we live constantly under fear. Do you know why when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, Jesus appeared to more than 500 people? Scripture tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 3 through 8 that Jesus Christ appeared, the the resurrected Jesus Christ appeared to 500 people. More actually than 500 people. Why? I was wondering, why did Jesus Christ had to appear to more than 500 people? He is to authenticate, to tell the people, I'm alive. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Christ died, was buried, and he rose from the dead. He appeared to Cephas. Peter, he appeared to the twelve. Then they say he appeared to more than 500 people at one time. That's a miracle there. He appeared to the apostle, to Mary Magdalene. That's a miracle. In fact, the whole story of the resurrection has to do with miracles. Because the modern mind cannot understand the idea of somebody being raised from the dead. Just because we don't understand it does not mean it did not happen. There is power in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And among the benefits of the resurrection is the courage to become. The resurrection gives us courage. Courage. That we are to live our life with the resurrection. It means we are going to make decisions not based on fear. But we make decisions based on hope and possibility. Don't just be afraid of what will happen tomorrow. Now you are overcautious that you don't live your life to the fullest. You are afraid all the time. We don't make decisions based on our fear. 
We make decision based on hope and possibility. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. So we live our life. We tune into courage whenever we are afraid. We look up to God. Oh, my brothers and my sisters. Fear. The devil has many people live under fear. Fear of tomorrow. There are those who are afraid. They think like something bad is going to happen very soon. There are those who are afraid I'm going to die. You know, one of the things that I always encourage myself, I'm not going to stay here eternally because this world is not our permanent home. We are all in transition. But I'm not afraid to live in my transition. I know our permanent home is heaven. So don't live your life with the sense of fear that you are going to die. You're not just going to die like a bird. It means God. The Bible says God knows the number of the hair on your head. God controls everything. When your time is up, you are going to transition. But don't live with that fear, fear of dying because the death, death is not the final hand. Christ coming back to life tells us that our destiny is not going to finish in the grave. So we live our life with that sense of purpose. There is a purpose of our existence. And every day, God is unfolding, opening that purpose of our existence as we are living that fully. We are living that abundant life that Christ said I've come so that you may have that abundant life. Abundant life that starts with fellowship, relationship with God. We are overflowed by the love of God. And the joy of God is in us. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We even sing in the midst of the fire. When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we are still joyful. And we make the devil mad. You know, the devil gets mad when you are going through difficult time and you are praising God anyhow. Like Paul and Silas in jail, they were praising God anyhow. The devil thought that this is going to break you and in the midst of your trials and tribulation, you are singing praise, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. Why? Because you know victory is mine. Victory is mine. And I'm going to walk from victory to another victory. My problem, they are outside of me. They don't program me. I don't say I woke up from the wrong side of the bed. Every morning, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will be glad. Oh yes, that's an attitude there. Living with the resurrection power is an attitude that we need to adopt in our lives. That I'm not going to let anything to break me down. I will rise. And I will walk. I will rejoice even in the midst of my trials and tribulation. This is why sometimes when you are driving and traffic is bad, you know you cannot control traffic. You don't control the guy who's in front of you. Instead of getting mad, you begin to contemplate the beauty of nature. How beautiful the nature is. And then a song comes into your spirit. Oh God, how awesome you are. How great thou art. When I wander and look around, I see the glory of God. You know, you tune into courage whenever you are afraid. You tune into courage. Because Christ came and the victory has been given to us. We reject fear. Because it's an attitude, we reject it. We have the courage to resist the fear. Peter would deny Christ three times. After the resurrection, Jesus appeared to them. And then one day, Peter tuned into courage. This man who was afraid of one person now stood in front of more than 3,000 people and he preached a tough sermon to them. He did not, he did not water down the gospel. Like preachers nowadays, we water down the gospel. We are afraid that you are going to run away from the church. There are some subjects that we are afraid to preach nowadays because people are going to run away. Come on. God's preacher must stand and speak God's words. I always say God did not call us to be famous, but to be faithful. And sometimes if you, you, you got to be God's preacher and speak God's words. Peter stood in the book of Acts, chapter 2. 
in front of a multitude. He looked at them and said, you, you killed Jesus. You, you people, you killed Jesus. And God raised him from the dead. Your blood, Jesus' blood is on your hand because you killed him. The sermon was so tough that the people came to Peter and said, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Recognize Jesus Christ as your Savior. And 3,000 people came to faith and and the church grew. 3,000 more people. Why? Peter tuned into courage and he began to apply the power of the resurrection, and he preached the gospel. Christ said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. We are living with the resurrection power with us. Do not be afraid. You are going to have trouble in life. You are going to have tribulation in life. You are going to have many challenges, but in the midst of your challenge, don't lose hope. Don't lose your balance. It will be well with my soul. Because God promised that it will be well. God says, fear not. In the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, God is saying, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, because I am with you. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hands. God is saying, fear not. So why are we afraid? Why should I cry? Why should I be afraid? So among the benefits of the resurrection is the courage. The courage to resist the fear, whatsoever it is. Learn to live with the power of the resurrection. It means you are going to believe what God says Because what God says is the truth. You are going to believe what God says. Because what God says, that's the fact, that's the truth. What people say is our opinion. People will always say opinion. A person will always say their opinion. But we don't walk by people's opinion. We walk by faith. We walk by what God says. If God says it can be done, I believe it can be done. And what the devil says is a lie. The devil is the biggest liar. He has been always lying since the beginning of all the time. He always lies. He's a liar. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead came to silence the lying of the devil. You know, even when he rose from the dead, the devil tried. Try to make it appear like the disciples were lying, that the story was not. There is a place in the gospel where they say they wanted to bribe, give money to the God so that they don't tell the story. Come on. Why is it that they needed to bribe somebody to give them money? Bribery did not start. Corruption did not start today. They wanted to cover up the story of Jesus Christ. They said, don't say anything. Pretend like nothing had happened. If they say Where is the body of Christ? Say the disciples came and stole the body of Christ. They tried that 2,000 years ago. And there are those who continue to try to minimize and and trying to say that Jesus did not rise from the dead. But all I know, if I go to Mecca, there is a place called Mecca. There is a grave of somebody named Muhammad, the prophet of the uh, Muslim. He died and he's still there and the followers of his religion, they go once every year to go to that pilgrimage to to go and atone of their sins and pay some, do something so that they can be forgiven. But when we walk in the street of Jerusalem, there is a difference there. The tomb is empty. The grave could not hold him. He's alive and he's alive. In our heart. Oh yes, he's alive. He walks with us. He speaks with us. Oh my brothers and my sisters. Live your life from victory to another victory. Walk like a victor, not like a victim. Walk like a victor. What does that mean? It means when you make mistakes. When you fall into sin. You don't carry the shame of your sin. 
You go to God and you confess your sin. And the Bible says when we confess our sin, His blood cleans us from all unrighteousness. So you have been clean. You have been forgiven. Those are the benefits of the resurrection. You have been forgiven. All your sins have been forgiven. So you rise your head. You walk like a victor. Oh, because when God looks at you, God sees a saint. God looks at you from the blood of Jesus Christ. Because remember, he died for our sin and he rose so that we may be justified. All have been paid. It is finished. Oh, come on, somebody. It is finished. It is finished. You have been forgiven. No more carrying, no more carrying the guilt with you. So today, my brothers and my sisters, what a great occasion to come and celebrate in remembrance of what the Lord has done. When we come for communion, we come to affirm our fellowship with God. We come to affirm that we are at one with God. Yes, we partake to the element. The element remains the element. But they symbolize the body of Christ for us, the blood of the new covenant. Because of Jesus Christ's death on the cross and because of his resurrection, we have the opportunity to enter in a new covenant with God. We are God's children. We have a covenant with God. And God is faithful. So those of you at home, have your bread ready, your juice, your water, and those here, everyone, we have our communion. Try to start with uh, the top first. Try to remove the waffle first and you hold it. And we will do it together. On the night the Lord gave up himself for us, he took the bread. He broke the bread. And then after he has given it to the disciple and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. The body of Christ, bread of heaven. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on this element. Pour out your Holy Spirit on our brothers and sisters at home and the, the element that they are holding in their hand. Make this be for us the bread of life. As we partake, may we be reminded about the love of God. Bread of heaven, take and eat and be thankful to the Lord. Likewise, when the supper was over, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. When the supper was over, he took the cup. And then after he has given thanks to God, he gave it to the disciple and said, take and drink. This is my blood. The blood of the new covenant. In this cup there is life. Blood symbolizes life. So Christ said, I've given my life for you. So as we do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ's life, Christ gave us his life. This is how much Christ loved us. And because of the love of God, we can be assured that we are loved no matter what. The cup of salvation. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon this cup. Upon us here and those at home, make this cup be a reminder of the new covenant that we have with you, the cup of salvation. Take and drink and be thankful to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the mystery of the cup and the mystery of the bread. We appreciate the work that you have done. And now, Holy Spirit, empower us to continue to tune into courage, to overcome whatsoever fears that can come our way, realizing that we have been saved to live our life from victory to another victory. In Jesus' name, let all of God's people say it, amen. And the band will come. Give God praise. Give God praise.